One type of application that's pretty common in uh, public agencies is a parcel viewer. These are great applications because they give people access to property information anytime, day or night. These are, of course, popular with folks like real estate agents and appraisers, but the general public really loves to see this information as well. And now they can see that information anytime from anywhere without having to go down to the county offices to ask some questions. So Harry, we'd like to take a look at how we create a simple, fast, and focused parcel viewer. Okay, let's do that. So as you've seen throughout the morning, we're starting in ArcMap because that's the place where we generally manage and maintain most of our data. And this is yet another example of that. What we're looking at here is some parcel data for the uh, state of Wyoming near the city of Grable. You may be wondering why there are no parcels here in the middle or scattered throughout. Well, I actually have taken out all the parcels that are owned by the Bureau of Land Management because they own a lot of parcel information out there. So the parcels you're seeing are the ones where people actually live on. So what I want to do is take this information, which again resides on my laptop only, and share it out as a parcel viewer. One of the great things about ArcMap is it allows you to begin to look at your data with base maps so you can see what the final result will look like. In this case, green is not the best choice for my parcels. So I can simply use the search tool to search for the color gray and come up with things, or come up with different styles of gray. I'll use this Esri Optimize one because I'm going to be publishing this to um, a server. And you'll notice that the base map for the imagery may not be the best one to use in this location. So if we zoom into Graybull a little closer, we can see that the colors could wash out the parcel. So what I want to do is actually add a different base map to this. So all these different base maps are available for you and they can actually be configured based upon your organization's needs. In this instance, I'm going to use the Graybull base map right here and just change it to the streets base map. So there we go. I like the look and the feel of this. So I'm going to go ahead now and publish this as a service so that we can create that application. So as I mentioned before, the way we share information is through the file menu. File, share as, a service. And I'm going to publish a service. And once again, I have the option to either publish to my on-premise ArcGIS for Server, or it could be ArcGIS for Server in the Amazon Cloud, or I can publish to ArcGIS Online. I'm going to choose to publish to ArcGIS Online. Counting parcels for Grable. And I'm going to go ahead and continue. So what's interesting about this particular data set that I'm publishing is it's parcel information. There's a lot of parcels in this particular area. And that's a lot of information to be drawing at one time. So I want to take into consideration performance. So when we publish a service, we have several capabilities that we can choose from. One of them is to create a tiled mapping service, which is a cache. And remember, caches are static images that are very quick to draw, so the performance is good on them. But they're just a picture. We can't get to the attribute information behind there. But if I actually turn on feature access, which allows me to gain access into the features and see the information behind them, I can now have the best of both worlds. I can have a very fast drawing map and be able to click on my map and get the attribute information for each one of those parcels. So that's what I'm going to use. I have different options to, to enable for this feature access. I want to make sure I turn off the ability for people to create or delete parcels. I do not want them to do that. I just want them to be able to query the parcels for information. And of course, I can adjust my cache levels as needed depending upon my extent. I've also already filled out my item descriptions, which are very important for people to understand what type of information this is. And I can go ahead and share this with everyone so that when I publish the service, it'll be available to the general public. Now, I won't take the time to actually go through the publishing process, and I'll show you what I've already created. So here is that exact same data set, already published, already in a web map. And you can see as I pan and zoom that the cache is updating very quickly. But when I click on one of these particular locations, it shows me the owner's name, 
the address as well as the parcel number. So that was my little trick. If you pu publish both of those together, you can get the best of both worlds. Now, the original question, Tim, was let's make a parcel viewer to show this to the public. Well, now that I have my web map, all I have to do is hit the share button. I want to make a web application, and I want to create my tax parcel viewer. So here's my parcel viewer. I'll go ahead and publish this. And again, I'm publishing this to ArcGIS Online. I do not have a web server locally to publish this to. And I'll call this Bighorn County Parcel Viewer. And now that I've created that, I can go to the item descriptions for this application and begin to configure the app. So this is a really nice viewer for many reasons. Um, first of all, I could enter and update the title. Let's call this Bighorn County. Also, I do have a URL for one of their images. So I'm just going to copy that URL and paste that here. I'm going to change the color screen to be a brick color to match their existing website. And now I get to choose which layer in my map I want to search on. Remember that we talked about the cache is just a picture, and there's no information behind it. So I actually want to search on the one that is a feature service. So I can just copy that and paste it here. Now there are particular fields in there, such as the owner name and the local number, which is what I call the APN number. Those are the ones that I want to search on. So I'll simply copy and paste those inside of there, and then hit the Save button. So there we go. We now see that I have my Bighorn County Parcel Viewer and the layers that are being searched on. So I'll hit the Save button, and there you go. We can now see that we've updated the color. There's the image that we had created. I also have the search dialog that's available to me, and when I click on that, I can search on those different fields. So I can type in the word Harry, or the name Harry, and come up with all the parcels that are owned by someone named Harry. And when I click on it, it will actually zoom me to that particular parcel. And notice that the pop-up, which I've already configured, looks exactly the same or I can type in the number 17 and search for any APN number that has 17 at the beginning of it. And then go ahead and click on any one of those and again I'll be taken directly to that parcel with the pop-up information that I've already configured. Now just to let you know one of the things that I've configured on this pop-up is the ability to go directly to the tax assessor's information for Bighorn County. So I've linked directly to that so you can see this person might owe some taxes uh, still. Um, but yeah, Tim, there you go. That's how we can take data that was residing on our desktop, publish it, and use the hosted parcel viewer to make an external facing application that will allow people to search for their parcels.